Now, as an enthusiast, there are a lot of nuances about automobiles that you should be well aware of, especially if you're going to buy a brand new automobile. But uh, here is one such thing that no one seems to pay as much attention to, but it is kind of important, and that is chassis. Now, what are chassis? What do they do? What are the types of chassis? Today, we're going to tell you all about it on this episode. So for starters, what is a chassis? Well, a chassis is a French word for a frame. What is a frame? Well, a frame is a chassis. Well, not really, but a frame is essentially the skeleton of your car. Just like your skeleton holds your organs and muscles in place, a car's skeleton kind of holds its parts and bearings together. What is the purpose of a chassis? Well, just like your skeleton, it's a load bearer. It bears the load of the rest of your body. The same way a chassis bears the load of the rest of the vehicle, along with all the parts and everything, and has to bear the load of all the abuse, be it accelerating, it's idle, it's braking, it's turning, it's off-roading, it's doing anything, or even when it comes down to crash protection. Chassis is very important. So today we're gonna to tell you about the types of chassis, starting with a tubular chassis. Now, a tubular chassis is not very common. It's only reserved for race cars mostly, mainly because of how rigid it is. It is quite safe, to say the least. It is quite rigid, and it's what most roll cages seem to be based on. And tubular chassis are normally reserved primarily only for performance or race vehicles, vehicles that are not going to be street legal, mainly because tubular chassis don't exactly uh, contribute to building comfortable cars. Uh, they're more focused vehicles, so to say. So what does a tubular chassis look like? Um, well, you ever seen a KTM Duke and you seen what a frame of a KTM Duke looks like? Something like that, but imagine that for a car. And, uh, or a roll cage. Have you seen a roll cage of a car inside a sports car? Well, or a race car, that's kind of what it looks like. So now the advantage of a tubular chassis is, again, it's incredibly rigid, it's very stiff, so great handling, great performance, great safety. Now the disadvantage is they're very tedious to make. Uh, they can take a lot of time to build, it can extend production costs and production times, so they're not very road friendly, so to say. Now the second type of chassis is a backbone chassis. What's so special about a backbone chassis? Well, it is quite literally like a backbone. And uh, it's a derivative of a ladder frame chassis. It's kind of similar in a lot of ways. And uh, now, uh, a, a, a backbone chassis, the advantage of a backbone chassis is that it's a lot more flexible. So it can take a lot of twisting and turning in off-road really well. Uh, especially when it comes to impacts that originate from the bottom. It soaks them up really well. It's very strong that way. And it is quite well prepared for off-road duty or just utility. Like even if it's for a pickup truck for that matter. The disadvantages are that it, they are incredibly tedious to work on. So say, imagine you had to work on your drive shaft in your vehicle. Yeah, you're gonna have to dismantle half your vehicle, which can be incredibly tedious because of how everything runs through the chassis as opposed to around it. So that can, be make, that can make things very difficult. Plus, they are not exactly the most cost effective to build each time and can be a bit more expensive. So yeah, these are the advantages and disadvantages of a backbone chassis. Now coming to ladder frame chassis or body on frame chassis. Now these are primarily built for off-road vehicles or SUVs or pickup trucks for that matter. Vehicles that are going to take a lot of heavy duty load or a lot of abuse, so to say. And uh, they're essentially two giant beams supported by tiny other beams and the, the chassis and the body are constructed separately. So the construction, which makes it a lot more um, modular, so to say. So case in point, if you look at the Toyota Innova, the Toyota Innova, the Toyota Fortuner, and the Toyota Hilux shared the same underpinnings. Well, not the new Innova, the own Innova Crista, but you know what I'm talking about. So, and the reason why Toyota could do that is because it was a ladder frame chassis. So they could just take the body of the car and apply it on different, different cars and build three different cars out of the same chassis. Now, in terms of safety, uh, ladder frame chassis aren't exactly known to be the best in terms of safety. Sure, they can take a lot of abuse, but uh, absorbing abuse from the road versus impact soaking is not the same thing. Impact protection, so to say. So those are the slight disadvantage of a ladder frame chassis. Uh, also, the advantage being it's very modular. It's easy to make. It is slightly more cost effective, so to say. But uh, the dis disadvantage being that, again, it's not very well suited for road vehicles. and. Uh, it tends to raise the height of the vehicle quite a lot, which is why you tend to see a lot of ladder frame chassis are usually taller cars. You'll never see a sedan based on a ladder frame chassis. So that's a thing. Um, now, it is a, a common uh, understanding that ladder frame chassis are usually reserved for off-road vehicles only, but as we're progressing into the future, 
we're going more and more towards monocoque chassis mainly because we've got better at constructing them which brings me to the fourth type of chassis monocoque chassis now these are the most common ones out there you will see them everywhere like almost every other car is a monocoque chassis and the reason for that is that a they're very easy to build comparatively they're also very rigid they're also very high on safety just because of how the entire construction of a monocoque chassis and the body and everything is one piece it's not built separately so that makes things a lot easier when it comes to building a safer vehicle additionally they are a lot more uh, rigid so they handle a lot better and they're better suited because of how compact and lightweight they are they're better suited for small cars hatchbacks performance cars sports cars stuff like that uh, mainly because of how lightweight they are again they keep the weight down performance goes up fuel efficiency goes up it's a win-win situation now what are the disadvantages to monocoque chassis a monocoque chassis is not exactly very off-road ready unless it's one specifically built for off-road case in point the new land rover defender the new land rover defender ditches the ladder frame chassis that it once was and is now switched for a monocoque chassis and uh, the advantage of that is that well the Land Rover Defender now handles a lot better on the road. It has much better mannerisms for a road car. And that's somewhere where monocoque cars seem to exist and excel. Ladder frame cars, mm, they're not very comfortable on road. Sure, there are a lot of nice ladder frame cars on road. You can get a lot of Mahindras and Tatas. They're all ladder frames. But monocoques, well, monocoques are everywhere. From the smallest hatchback out there to getting us hands on a sports car. Everything is a monocoque chassis. And well... This was a quick video to just bring you up to speed with the different types of chassis and the advantages and disadvantages that they may propose. Uh, if you like this video, please let us know in the comment section below. And if you'd like to see more of this or if there are any such subjects that you'd like us to touch up upon, drop a comment below and we shall be at it. This is Gavin Rodriguez signing off.